first thing I want to show you is this one slide right here. <clears throat> and you can see here what I've done is I'm doing a deadlift on the left. And on the right, I'm doing a supine tricep extension. So what I'm showing you here is that extension is extension. Glute hip extension is very similar to elbow extension. All right. So they both have a pivot point. You can see that what I'm saying there is that my forearm simulates the torso and I've drawn a straight line through the torso. So you can see that the similarity there. Okay, now in this next slide, what I've done here is I've shown you that the torso is comprised of vertebrae, which are basically individual little bones, not a solid bone or two solid bones like the forearm is, All right? So that means that, that you can, you can load up that tricep extension and not worry about that forearm bending. Right. But the, because the spine is made up of vertebrae, the spine does bend, right? And, and you then rely on the erector spinae to keep it from happening. The problem is that um, you, the glute muscles, the hip extension muscles are significantly more powerful than, than the erector spinae. So there's going to come a point when you cannot further load the gluteus without jeopardizing the spine, even though the gluteus can be further loaded. So in other words, you either have to underload the gluteus and protect the spine or protect the spine and underload the gluteus, one or the other. So I don't know if I said that right. You can, you can load the gluteus maximally and jeopardize the spine or you can protect the spine and underload the gluteus. So on this next slide, what I'm showing you here on the left is the skeleton as it's bending at the hip. Now, I realize, of course, that there normally would be a little bit more knee bend than that, but the hip is doing that and the spine is doing that. And you can see the photo on the right is a guy who is in fact rounding his spine. Now you might think this is fairly uncommon. I have dozens and dozens and dozens of pictures of lots of lots of bodybuilders, advanced bodybuilders rounding their spine like this. This is begging for a herniation. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if this person on the right already has a herniated disc and doesn't know it. Herniation happens because you have these, basically let's call them square vertebrae. And as the spine bends forward, it brings the inner edges together and opens up the outer edges. And that gelatinous tissue, the intervertebral this that's in between, gets squeezed on this side. It's like toothpaste. It's like pushes it out the back. Now, Sometimes it just bulges and sometimes it bursts and the gelatinous stuff comes out. Um, and some people don't have back pain if they have a herniated disc. And some people do because we have nerves that run right alongside our spine. And all it takes is a touch on one of those nerves and you have a lot of pain. You might even have some degree of numbness, depending on how long it's been there and how severe it is. And so... What I'm getting at is this, is that the main reason to do uh, a deadlift is to work that hip extension function, which is primarily the glutes with some assistance from the adductors and the hamstrings. So on this next slide, we're going back and you can see how straight I can keep my forearms because my forearms don't bend. And on the right, you can see that the back is actually rounding. And then when you get to the top on this next slide, you can see when you get to the top of the motion, all of your limbs are vertical, right? So you're not loading much, really. I mean, the barbell is slightly in front of you instead of behind you or alongside you. So there's still a little bit of a forward pull, but mostly it's just downward pull on your arms, which is your scapula, which is your spine. You can see there on that slide on the right that that downward pull uh, from the barbell, and this guy has what looks to be about, I don't know, five, maybe 600 pounds or close to six, maybe 595. Anyway, um, and so that, curving of the spine is going to compress like an accordion to some degree. How much? We don't know. But any amount of accordion-ish of the spine is not productive. You might avoid injury, but when you ask yourself, what's the gain? Why am I doing this? I'm doing this for primarily hip extension loading. Isometric erector spinae loading, which we'll talk about in just a second, isometric not being as good as dynamic loading, which is what's happening with the hip extension muscles. They're being dynamically loaded. 
So the question is, can you get that much, as much hip extension loading without jeopardizing the spine? And I just showed you that multi-hip machine, which is 210 pounds, one leg, right? So the answer is yes, you can get a shit load, excuse me, of, of gluteus loading, of hip extension loading without having to compress your spine, without jeopardizing your spine. Now on this next slide, there I am doing the, uh, again, the uh, hip extension, 210 pounds, full range of motion. Look how that femur comes almost all the way up to my chest. So I'm getting just as much or more hip extension loading, glute loading, as I would without getting that jeopardizing of the spine. And on this next slide here, you can see on the left is the erector spinae. And what I'm doing there is dynamic torso extension. I'm actually moving my spine. Now I'm just demonstrating it just for the sake of form. You can then take a 20 pound dumbbell, a 30 pound dumbbell, whatever you want to take on there. If you haven't tried this exercise, I encourage you to try it without any weight first. Try doing 20 reps. Try doing full range of motion as I'm doing it there, where you're rounding the back and then arching the back, lifting the chest up, raising the shoulders. And you will be surprised how much erector spinae fatigue and loading you feel. And then you add a 10 or a 20 or a 30 pound weight to it, and it's significantly more. So this is going to give you significantly more erector spinae development than an isometric tension would. And in terms of survival, it's like, I have never found myself in a situation, despite the fact that I don't deadlift 400 pounds, never found myself in a situation where I'm sorry, I can't help you lift that couch. I helped a guy push his truck the other day because, you know, his car wouldn't start. I mean, you know, what kind of survival are we talking about here? Yeah. <laughs> it is ridiculous to think that you need to deadlift and, or to think that the muscles that would be involved in the deadlift can't be worked a better way. So Doug, what's the purpose of you doing that, uh, that look like a deadlift with dumbbell? Oh, I also want to talk about that 20 or 30 pound thing that he criticized yeah, the RDL. Yeah. Um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm basically loading the upper end of the torso lever. Uh -huh. And then I'm rolling it and I'm elongating the erector spinae and contracting the erector spinae the same way you would extend a bicep and contract a bicep or a tricep or a quadricep. Or I mean, it's been studied dynamic tension, dynamic muscle loading, full range of motion or mostly full range of motion is significantly more productive, both for strength increase and muscle size increase as compared to isometric. So if you think that doing isometric loading of the erector spinae is the best way to work the erector yeah. spinae, then you have to also believe that working everything else isometrically would be better or as good as dynamic, right? So then you would or should, if that's what you believe, just hold a barbell at 90 right. degree bending for your bicep training and hold the tricep and hold the, and you know, you would not think to do isometric for any other body part. Why would you do it for the erector spinae? Right. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Getting back to what he was, he was saying, I, what I said is I take a pair of 20 or 30 pound dumbbells and I basically do the movement of hip extension for the sake of stretching. It's mm -hmm. just a stretch in between sets. It's not meant to do what the gluteus machine, the hip extension machine is doing with 210 pounds, which would be 420 pounds if I use both legs together. And, and you saw what I said to Mark was, is why would I use that exercise when I can get the same feeling a better way? Right. That's what I'm right. saying, right? So, you know, he's obviously speculating on what Mark Bell was thinking when I said that Mark Bell understands far more than this person does. So he has, he has the context that this person doesn't have. And so he's able to understand it because we, we'd have conversations about this before. Now, this is not to say that Mark Bell doesn't enjoy deadlifting. Yeah. He does. And this is not to say that the whole ritual of being with your buddies and deadlifting isn't fun. But he does understand that if his objective is not to participate in the fun of that ritual, that if your objective was to get the maximum amount of gluteus loading or hip extension muscle loading and the most productive kind of erector spinae loading, you can do that doing the two exercises I just showed you and avoid entirely the spinal risk that, that, that happens when you compress and then you basically urge your torso to fold forward because you're trying to maximally load your, and, and by the way, you know, 
this ritual that I'm describing becomes competitive. Yeah. Right. And in the face of competition, that's when people get hurt. That's when people start doing things that are not quite careful because, you know, they, they kept their, their spine straight on that last set, but damn it, they want to go a little heavier yeah. and it's slightly exceeding now. Boom. And it may not happen. Boom. Like that. It may happen. God, you know, a year later, it's like my back's yeah. been bothering me. It's like, well, <laughs> you know, Doug, uh, I understand that we all have different goals when we go to the gym. Like my primary goal is always go to have muscle growth. That's why I go to the gym. But sometimes I just go there because I need to be in the gym. I need to relax my mind. I need to, you know, uh, focus on something else other than what I'm doing at home. De-stress. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So at that point, I'm not in the gym trying to push as hard as I can and stuff. My goal is different, you know. So, and by the way, when you, when you load a muscle, it's going to get stronger. Yeah. When I'm doing yeah. a 200, 210 pound hip extension on that multi-hip machine, my glute is getting stronger. It's not just a cosmetic thing. Right. Right. So what I'm saying is like, it happens that sometimes I might use something different than what I usually use because my goal in that session is something else than muscle growth, you know, but it's important also to know that you cannot use those exercises if you want optimal muscle growth, you know, and that's what we're talking about here. Efficiency, use the most efficient exercises to get to that goal, you know, when the conditions are good. Right. You know? Yeah. We're teaching how to get more. We're not teaching how to get less, <laughs> you know, here's the thing is, I mean, you might get more using less, but you're still getting more load. The question is, are you avoiding the weak link in the chain in order to push the limit farther than that weak link would otherwise allow, right? So, but the other thing I wanted to say too was, uh, as we've said so many times, you know, I would not say don't do squats. I would not say don't do deadlifts. Yeah. What I'm saying, what we're saying is that deadlifts have these mechanical issues. If you want to do a deadlift and you want to use perfectly good form and you want to use a couple hundred pounds, and you're not inclined to let your spine fold forward, that's fine. But just keep in mind that your glutes are stronger, your hip extension muscles are stronger than your rectus spinae, and there will come a point if you continue pushing, 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 when your glute strength will exceed your rectus spinae strength and your form will suffer. And when your form suffers, you drastically increase the risk of injury. If you enjoy deadlifting 200, 300 pounds, assuming that's the limit for you before your spine starts to fold forward, that's perfectly okay. I'm not saying don't do that. I am saying there's a better way of loading the erector spinae and a better way of loading the glutes if your objective is to get the optimal loading. Right. 